Are you tired of running your own events? Burned out coming up with something for your thankless players every goddamn week? Break out your dice, bitches! It's time for the Myth Wits, the show dedicated to all things geek pop culture, drenched in absurdity and coated with sarcasm. Every week we bring you an industry guest to talk about the ever-expanding Geekoverse and to play a game with us. We do our damnedest to be funny, but there are no guarantees. I'm your host, Peter Bryant, and joining me this week is my co-host, Mike Kafis. My favorite show, The Mythwits, is on. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Our guests this week are Scott Legault. Did I say that right? Did I say that right, Scott? Good. All right, I'll have to drink on that one. Nobody gets a drink. Right. Wait a minute. And Mike, I ain't going to screw this one up. Petra Jackal. Excellent. Hello. Yay. <laughs> Get that Corey said it right. Uh, <laughs> Scott Scott and Petra formed Love Dark it, Phoenix. <laughs> formed Dark Phoenix events 3 years ago with the goal of bringing together excellent gamers with excellent game masters. Their crew of 22 game masters and support staff have the ability to bring professional game masters to you anywhere in the New England uh, from anywhere from in the New England in New England from Maine to New York they can run uh, one game or a weekend full of games for you even supplying local location services from hotels to campgrounds and food service from local caterers to their own culinary staff they have run events in mansions and in deep in the deep woods and everywhere in between in addition to all manner of gaming events they offer murder mysteries for 6 to 60 and live action role play events as an example recently in total con uh, in Marlboro, Maine. Hey, we know of Total Con. Uh, they ran 41 games over a weekend with two, over 250 gamers experiencing 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 their high energy professional game mastery. Scott and Petra, welcome to the Mythwits. Welcome. Thank you for having thank us. You. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, well, already in the chat room, two people are fanboy and girling over. Yeah. Over Yay! So congratulations. <laughs> Not Pete didn't even get the uh, bio done, and people are saying the that they love your games. Ever. We do. We, we do. do. We That's love our Fantastic, fantastic. Hey, we have announced. Uh, I have an announcement. I I have an announcement. I don't have these too often, but I actually have an announcement for once. Um, and and it's it's uh, it's for Studio One Eighty Seven. Uh, which is going away. Uh, it's being replaced with uh, Aether Forge Creations, and um, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, you know, well, I resisted night. it. I know, Mike. Mike hates change. Look, look. Here's the face of I hate change. There it is. There it is. All right. No, it it really. Okay, so so I've been bannering around this. I, I've I bought Aether Aetherforge uh, dot com about. Two years ago, so that's how long I've been sitting on this. I've been I've been hemming and hawing on this for two years, because you know, Studio. Hey, Mike, did you know the Studio 187 officially hit 20 years? Wow, 20, 20 you years! Killed it! You I did. killed it on its 20th birthday. Now, so the the name is it's you know I kind of I, I kind of just did like my own thing for years. I never really went anywhere with it or did too much until about 10 years ago. I started making stuff under the under the, the name. Um, and then I formed as a, uh, an official company. I don't know. It's only like five years old as an actual official company. Um, and then, you know, the name comes from uh, California. It's the California Code. It may be in other states too, but I know it's definitely for California for for ma- for murder. So it's a homicide. And it and it was back when I was younger, and it was like, yeah, I'm gonna put a skull on it. It's gonna be you know, it's, it's gonna be the studio murder, and yeah, and, you know, and, you know, and, and it's oh, and it was you just, forgot one part. What's well, that, Pete? Pete, what about when you get older? Oh, fuck that, man. Older me is going to totally love it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Older, older me is going to be cool. <laughs> so, so anyway, as I've, as I've aged and, and, and I've just, I don't know, it's just a different time. It's a whole different yep. me. It's, you know, and I, and now I, you've I, murdered I, it. Yeah, and I murdered it in Studio 187. Hey, it's a 187 on 187, right? So, <laughs> so anyway, so it, it's going to take me a little time to transition everything over. I have the I have the uh, the the uh, URL, but uh, I'm getting ready to go to Gary Con, so I can't really work on it. I just kind of wanted to get it started. I uh, got a new Facebook page because Facebook was being a Fucktard. Oh, so mad at Facebook. They wouldn't let me just change the name. They kept telling me, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, that's not the same thing. I'm like, 
what? You, what? They're like, we don't want you to mislead your, your, you know, your, your people. And I'm like, mislead. Them. And I, I kept email. I got like ten emails back and forth of Facebook. Right. I'm like, no, it's, it's. The, I'm doing the same exact thing. I'm just changing the name. And then they were like, okay, well, if you're really changing the name. Oh, no. uh, could you, you know, show us a press release or uh, 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 show us, the, I don't know, just different things. So I hit like three, all three of them. You know, I put a post on my on my page stating the name name change. I, uh, you know, which is basically a press release. Uh, I got Steve Wallet to do like an announcement on Nerd Rage News, and and uh, our our good buddy John Jonathan Reinhardt. What well, he didn't do this until today, but that's fine. I still I'm still happy about it. Um, you know, that, that was going to be another press release that they needed it. Fine, whatever. They come back and they go, uh, yeah, we don't we don't accept certain characters or this format or whatever. And I'm like, <laughs> what? I'm like, no, it's two words. It's There's no symbols. There's no there's no nothing in it. What are you doing? So I, I emailed it back, emailed them back. And I said, no, I think you're mistaken. It's just two words and they're two real words. And there's no like weird formatting or anything. And then I waited. And this is like a day between every email. They take like 24 hours to get back to you. Then they email me back and they're like, um, I think you've sent this to the wrong place. Uh, we're going to send you to another place. I'm like, fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. I'm changing the name. And uh, basically just telling people, look, just come over. And, and the fans, people who are really fans and follow us, will come over to the new site because they'll see all the announcements and everything. And those who aren't, bye, Felicia. <laughs> it's just, you, know, you know what this reminds me of? What's that? Do you remember the time when you and I went to the liquor store to get alcohol? I was underage at the time. I was okay. freaking out, but you weren't. You were like 21, 22 or whatever. And you had your 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 uh, your ID. And, oh, yeah. and the guy's like the guy's like, Is this really you? He's like, Yeah, yeah, it's me. And he holds up his hair because his hair was in a different style. And he's like, mm, you know, hey. Mm. And he's like, No, I don't know. He's like, and he's like, here, let me see your signature. He takes his hand with his left hand, right? He's left-handed, and he has this weird way. You know, left-handed people. No, 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 no. That's not how I hold a pen. I hold a pen like this. Eh, shut up. All right, let, let me tell my story the way I tell it. <laughs> right, tell it however you want. And he's like, he's like, this is my you know, with his lefty signature thing. And then the guy's like, mm, says here you have uh, hazel eyes. Uh, they look a little green to me. <laughs> I'll get alcohol somewhere else. Fuck you. <laughs> What's two? I was like, fuck you. I'll never buy alcohol here again. And I didn't. And it sucked because it was the place right around the corner from my house. I was like, God damn it. <laughs> so anyway, all right. Enough about enough about that. So check out check out Aether Forge, whatever. Uh, more, you know, more good stuff coming. It was now or never because I'm getting ready to launch Cuba Death. And I was like, you know what? If I'm going to launch something, I'm going to be known for something. I might as well be known for what I'm going to go with. So it's either shit or get off the pot. Yeah, it's a good name, Pete. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All okay. right. Hey, you guys. So How's it going? tell us about Dark Phoenix events. What, how did this get started? Um, It got started because me and my wife's kids got older. And um, we were like, gee, kids are going to all be moving out soon. What do you want to do? And we love gaming. <laughs> we met gaming. And we started talking about, well, maybe we should meet some people in our age. And, uh, we wanted to and make gaming. sure we would still talk to each other and like each other as the years go by, you know? <laughs> right. And uh, we went to an event. Um, I think it was Carnage. We right. met, yeah. um, And we met Sean and Elizabeth. And that was kind of the start of it. And then once we met one set of really good gamers, we were like, wow, there must be more. And uh, we started actively recruiting um, game masters, um, and that was like five years ago. And then um, we started running some private events um, before we actually became Doc Phoenix. And um, they were went so successful that people would be like, "Oh, when's your next one? When's your next one?" So we started thinking about well, maybe we could do this as a business on the side. We actually run um, two uh, private cons that we do, one in March and one in August. The one in August is a camping one uh, where we uh, camp for three days and have four or five tables. and Terror in the woods. And <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, Wait a minute, so, as well as a murder mystery party we do every year. Hold on. Does, does, Andre, does Andre run anything in the, in the, uh, yeah, he, in the he, Terror he, in the woods? Actually, oh, yeah. Yeah, he yep. comes. Yeah, yep. Every year. He brings okay, his small that's... Light, light setup. 
That's real terror, because you know Andre puts on a, he puts on a scary game, and then if you're in the woods, you know. Oh, gaming in the dark is is really awesome. the bomb. It yeah. really is. You got to try it. We got the firelight. We got the the river and the water and the dark. It's really really cool. Yeah. He awesome. says, then the mosquitoes attack. It's like, God damn it, I can really feel them. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta lose some blood or it's not worth it, right? They're like, they're like, they're like small night gaunts. Okay. So so you bleed for your hobby. You're saying yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. All right, cool, cool. So um so you had a que- now this is this is odd. You had a question in your in your uh in the doc that says to ask you why you love this. I mean like that seems like a trick question. I <laughs> no, um, I've been gaming since I was fifteen, yeah. um, which was you know like, only a few like years, ten ago. years ago. Years yeah. ago, yeah. And uh, um, it's just something that I've done. My sister and brother do it. We've always done it as a family, and it's just been one of those things that's you know you meet the best people gaming. We really, you do. really do. It, it's part of our life. That's that's what it is. Yeah. I mean, our kids game. Everybody we know. Closely, pretty, pretty much games. We have some other people that don't game, but they come to murder mysteries. So really, so that they're, counts. They're LARPing, but they don't know it. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh yeah. There's, there's all kinds of stuff that 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 is either a LARP or an RPG, and people don't realize it. Like those escape rooms, you know, that everybody, yeah. Oh, yeah. That people oh, yeah. are going yeah. to, right? They're they're LARPing. They just don't oh, realize yeah. it. Yep, definitely. Yep. And uh, it for me, it's actually social. That's what that's what I love about it. It's a face to face or you know face to video. Um, <laughs> attempt to you know meet other human beings and and do great social stuff we have an amazing group of people that we've met through gaming and um I, we couldn't be happier with uh, the way things are going yeah um well it could be a little well happy. we get to we do could, with what we love we make it more you money, know so. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and you know and people pay us for it so what more do you have mm-hmm. what, what do you need so um, scott i remember talking to you at the uh, one of the parties and I kind of asked you, well, how does this work? So, I mean, just run through that again. Like say I'm in the new England area and I'm like, yep. you know, I've, I've never role played before. I'm, I'm interested in this. Well, let me call this dark Phoenix up and see, you know, like what it is. Walk people through the process. So we'll, uh, we'll find out exactly. First of all, if they've never game before, what, what are they interested in? Are they interested in fantasy? Are they interested in sci-fi? Um, I'll do that like horror. I mean, um, everybody's different in what they want. And then what we'll do is, depending on where they're located, we have several GMs that can cover that area. And we can set up a game for them where a professional GM will go to their house, run a game for them. They get some cool swag for them and their players. Mm-hmm. And then uh, at, when it's done, he just leaves. And they don't have to worry about, you know, takes all this stuff with them. And they had a good time. And just like going to a movie and watching a movie. Um, you leave at the end, right? So the DM <laughs> leaves at the end. Yeah, but and, uh, I mean, Scott, you know, I, I, I have, you know, some money to go out to dinner and, and, and a movie, but I mean, how much could something like this cost me? It, it's about the same as going out to, for, for each of your players, uh, like the same to go to a movie in and a, in a, like a pub, not even a good uh, expensive dinner. <laughs> um, yeah, our average game for like four to six pe- for six people is runs about four hours, and yeah, run you under three hundred bucks. And I noticed that you actually have some people who will come in and cook as well. Oh yeah, we have uh, we have two or uh, we have three actually uh, people that cook for us. Uh, when we go to the camping event, we bring our own cook. No one brings any food. Uh, we supply all Everything. the food as part of part of the uh, price. Um, we can do that for our customers too, um, and um, that way they don't have to worry about oh I got to cook and I got to want a game and I don't you know have the time to do this and that. They just it's show all up. taken care of. You show up with your dice in a tent and uh, you lose right. your sanity. Uh, it's awesome. We, we always in our group we always have the sub shop uh, cater for us. So, <laughs> yeah, we know. Well, you can do that too. <laughs> but, you know? No real food. <laughs> yeah, we 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 do real food like full breakfasts. We do. Uh, nice. Um, a variety of soups, chilies, um, whatever, whatever you want. Yeah, nice. I've, hey, look, I was doing a little, uh, doing a little math over here, and I Uh-oh. was looking at, was looking at the, the three. So for three hundred dollars, could I get six players for three hundred dollars? Is that about yeah, right? About that. Okay. Yep. All right. So I got six and players. And that's one game. If you run more than right. one, it actually gets cheaper for you. Okay, right. but let, let's say we do. There. 
let's say we do one four hour session, right? If yep. I were to go to the movies twice, because that's two hours yep. a piece, right? It's four hours of entertainment, or hang out at the bar for four hours. That's only fifty dollars a person. Now I know at the bar I can generate a fifty dollar tab in two hours. <laughs> about twenty minutes. <laughs> about yeah, twenty, 20 minutes. minutes, right? More right. like that, yes. Yeah. Right. I could have, have one of these. And <laughs> done. Right. So oh. so yeah, that's that's definitely uh, that's definitely doable. It, it, it's yeah, we're not uh, looking to get rich on anybody. We're looking to bring games to people. Right. And then, so the, I, I'm assuming that the game masters, uh, do they they split that with you? Is there like a? We get a, they, that's the 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 model of the the uh, the model of of Doc Phoenix is when we when we came up with it. I said it didn't work unless we could pay the game masters. So the mm -hmm. game masters do get paid. Okay. I mean, it's not an amazing amount of money, but yeah, they do get paid. So. Right. You could hey, you could do all that work for your friends for free. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Good. And actually Good. and actually have them like give you shit for it, you know. It's like, oh, I didn't really like what you did with that adventure. It's like, motherfucker, I worked all night on this. You, know? <laughs> you act like you've DM before, Pete. I, I have, I have, but I've also been the guy complaining, my bad. I I you know I I'll i wear the shame the hat of shame. I've done that myself. So <laughs> Yeah. But, but yeah, we've planned some parties. We've done some. Uh, the other thing we do is we do some gaming that um, I haven't seen anybody else do. We run a four GM game for twenty four players uh, that ends in a lop style ending. Uh, I've never seen anybody do that. We've done it now three times, yep. um, all different games. Um, matter of fact, uh, my, last year at our private event, we made the ladies run. You made the, us. The four, well. <laughs> we asked them, like, careful there careful scott and they, they, did amazing, and they did an amazing job they were it was it was a blast so. right right and I, I gotta tell you you know i mean I, i've so like like you all you know when tsr has a room across the hall from you all at total con this yep. year and last year and probably next year um and and you know we do like a Friday night main event where where me and James and and you know someone else usually will put together and Mike helps us out put together yeah. like a big event and and that thing takes forever I mean it takes me a long time to put that thing together yeah. so like yeah. if you're if if you're talking about you know paying a certain amount of money to go to an event and it is a bang on event with all kinds of really cool stuff and uh, you know generally you're looking at I don't know. 12, 15 hours worth of work on that person's part. Yep. Now they may use it again and again for different events. Right. You know, it's like, hey, I can I can use this event again. But still, I mean, to think about it, how much is fifteen hours worth of your time? You know, right. how, how much how much would you need? How much would I have to pay you to work for fifteen hours on something, right? right? And that's right. usually what a game master doing like a big main event does. Um, right. You know, something of, of of substance, something that right. you know you would charge people to come to. No, you're right. You're right. It um, it's entirely a, a reasonable fee, we believe. Um, it's a and, labor of love. And it is a labor of love. Um, like I said, we're not getting rich on it, and we're not planning to. Uh, it's something that we we have to charge something to be able to offer the service. So, but right. it's fun. Right. But it's, it's fun. fun. We get to meet all kinds of cool people all over. No, we hey, make I... so many new friends. I got a question for you. So let's say I'm, I'm an experienced gamer, um, and I uh, do I get to dictate? Like, can I say I want to play this game? Yep. And then do we'll you find a game, game master? Yep. Okay. So in other words, you'll find one one of your game masters. Yep. You'll say, hey, I, I need somebody to run this. Who, who's, I think who's at up last for that? count, um, between everyone, we're right around 220 games that we can run. Okay. Cool. So yeah, we cover some weird stuff. So. <laughs> Oh, I don't think I want to know. <laughs> Mazzola, <laughs> leave me. Whatever it is, I'm sure you do know it already. <laughs> oh yeah, well there's a. Now I was gonna say Mazzola Twister, but anyway. Um, uh, so so. Fiasco. Well, Fiasco is one of the weirdest ones. Fiasco. Yeah, I, I have yeah. actually played. I've played Fiasco. I played a game of Fiasco, and I I don't know how many people have ever played it. I'm sure a lot of people have seen it or, or heard of it. Oh, hold on, real quick. Wait a minute. Uh, Dave ben Dave Benavidi says hashtag Meat Shield. Um, hey, but <laughs> Tell David said hi. Hold him. Yeah. Um, uh, oh shit! I forgot where I was going. God damn it. Um, well, I guess it wasn't important. Never mind. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> thanks, David, for distract. No. Uh, <laughs> it's meat um, shield. It was all meat shield's fault. It's all meat shield's fault. All meat shield. No. Uh, fiasco. That's where I was. So, so fiasco. Tell us a little bit about fiasco because it's it's a fun game. I've played it once myself. I thought it was interesting. But uh, I want you guys to tell us about fiasco real quick. Um, fiasco is 
Fiasco is my expertise. I run all the Fiasco games. I love Fiasco. It is pure role play. Uh, it is the players at the table who create the story. And uh, there's a very loose framework. There'll be a theme like pirates as they were at, at Total Con or Dresden. And I give a very, very loose relationship and a reason for you to be here. And then the players go around the table and create the story. Whatever they say is true. Um, so once the game starts, you can you can look at your neighbor and say you're a drug dealer or cross the street you're a prostitute. However that or works. Or penguin smuggler. Yes, and you have to work that into the storyline. However that is that that's that's how it works. It always devolves very quickly. It's an 18 plus player only. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. And it's 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 a really great hysterical game. And as a GM, it's the best game ever because I don't do anything. The players do it all. Right. I don't create the story. It is completely a creation of their own. Um, I'm just there to kind of moderate. And doesn't it? Doesn't Fiasco generally the, the kind of the goal of Fiasco is for the for it to kind of bam, go south yep. into the ocean as fast as it possible? It absolutely does. It is a complete Fiasco. It's very yes. aptly named. Um, it usually devolves within about a half an hour of people sitting at the table. Um, <laughs> even if they don't know each other at all, it doesn't matter. It's it's, I think the longest I've ever gone was 45 minutes before it really took a turn south. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a fun game. Mike, you would, you would like this game. You would really like it. No, I was going to say, remember when we were at GaryCon last year, and we, or the two couple years ago, when we played that game, uh, bon, Marin von Munchausen. Baron Munchausen, yeah. yeah. That's a fun that, game. It sounds like the same thing because it, that went south quick. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, it gets south real quick. <laughs> That's not what I heard. heard. <laughs> I had a ring and it was around <clears throat> anyway. Um, so, yeah. so what do you, you know, this is interesting and I'm going to, I'm going to talk a little bit about this because I, I think it's something that's heading into heading into our, our future uh, very, very much so in the professional world. And uh, I'm going to make a little prediction that, that the army is going to start using this a little more. Um, and that's, yeah, your that's in the future goals. But what are your current goals now? You, um, you were saying that gaming is a teaching tool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I firmly believe that that gaming is responsible for um, at least our children's um, some success in school, um, stuff they've learned through gaming, teamwork that they've learned, um, problem solving. There's Critical so, thinking. So much that comes out of gaming um, that um, social skills for those that don't have. I them. love to promote it to the younger people in the world. Um, I think it's a great great hobby. It keeps you out of trouble. Uh, it, it exercises your mind. Um, yeah. And even as, a, as businesses, it's something to, to use as team building exercises, um, use role play to understand the different roles in the, in the job market. Um, it's a great tool, and I do think that we're going to see it more and more as the acceptance of gaming has grown. Yes. I think we're going to see it more and more in the business world as well. Yeah, that's kind of where we're trying to head, at least. Oh, yeah. Okay. Still love gaming, so. But I think hey. I think it could be a great teaching tool for team building mm-hmm. and business business uh, examples. So. Hey, our, our buddy Jonathan's yeah. in the chat room, and he he says uh, he says there should be a combined TSR Dark Phoenix Fiasco game at Woo! TotalCon 2019. <laughs> Oh, you're on. Yeah. Oh, you're that on. would go so far south, it would come back from the north. <laughs> I can't wait to be part of that. Uh, oh, oh, you know, Pete, coming. Hey, Pete, right. this, yeah. this might be a good time to let Scott know this. I don't know if Scott knows this or not, but um, whether or not uh, it's anyone else knows, uh, in um, James's head, uh, there's some sort of a little rivalry that he yes, has in his head know. between our room and your room. <laughs> yes, and he does. Time. So yes, he does. It cracks so me funny. up. <laughs> <laughs> like, last year, last year he was like, "Ooh, they have banners. Oh, we can have banners." <laughs> right. Oh, next year we're gonna have something bigger. <laughs> <laughs> we're definitely louder. Maybe we'll have a t-shirt sure. cannon next year. A yeah. t-shirt cannon? Oh shit! <laughs> oh, you hear that, James? <laughs> Yeah, James. James, don't listen. <laughs> no, it, James, it's funny. It's, all good, it, it's <laughs> funny. It's funny because all right, yeah. So he was like, "Oh, they had banners, all right." And it's like, so, so he shows up with like four banners, right? He's like, "I spent four hundred dollars on these banners." 
<laughs> but we need it. We need him anyway. No, it's good. It's a good thing. But and but we it's had just the funny. Badge things this year. We love you, James. Right? Oh, oh yeah. So so. <laughs> right. so you guys gave me. Saying. You gave me the dark phoenix. Like like I was in the uh, the. Oh, the, the flea market, right? And uh, Jen gives me, uh, uh, me and Mike gives us uh, uh, Dark Phoenix badge things and yeah. then also gave us uh, the buttons, right? Yeah, so I put, the, I, put the badge, year, so. I put the badge thing on and yeah. I put the button on, right? And I'm talking to James, right? I'm just, I, I did it, I mean, I purposely did it right away for him. So I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to him, right? And all of a sudden he goes, what the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Well, we gotta get those. <laughs> tell, tell James he has a seat at the fiasco table when we combine TSR and Dark Phoenix. Oh. All right, all right, we'll do, we'll do. No. It's funny, and and then, and then. And then and then you guys put up a banner, you know, on on, uh, on Total Con's page about you know announcing your events and stuff, and uh, and James emails me. He's like, hey. We need to put together a graphic to put up on Total Cut. <laughs> I saw your graphic. It was good. I yeah. think that's the other thing. I, for a lot of private events, I do posters. I do all kinds of stuff. Right. Um, I, I just enjoy doing that. We so. have special shirts, too. See? Special shirts. Yeah, oh, James nice. needs a shirt. Nice. Mm. Yeah, you should get... You oh, my God. The poorhouse. Oh, my God. You you got to <laughs> give James a shirt. You got to... <laughs> <laughs> we could have it. We could have it say Nemesis. Oh yeah! <laughs> oh, that would be the best. But I, I just, I see it. You know, I, I, I don't think he, he's not really getting mad. But he does get a little like. I think he's, he's like, he's like, oh, you know, he's like, oh, we got to show. And I see it as just a friendly rivalry. I like it. It's yeah. a really fun, friendly rivalry. It's like I, I oh, feel James like. Oh, James and Mary are great people. We're yeah. good friends with yeah. them. So. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. It, it's fun. It's good fun. All right, so hey, what? Where, where is this going? Where's Where's gaming going? You know, as, as a professional, uh, tool, you said. Well, we're gonna keep doing this until they put me in the ground. Um, okay. Nice. I, I, I love it. We have a blast. I feel this um, gaming makes keeps me young. Um, it keeps me. I look forward to gaming. Um, I look forward to hanging out with all the cool people that we meet. Yep. Um, I like scaring people in horror games, and I get a thrill out of that. Um, I like making people laugh in steampunk games, and I get a thrill out of that. So I'm, I don't see that stopping anytime soon. Um, right. We met at to, at TotalCon 15 years ago, yep. and uh, gaming's really like integral to our lives. Yep. So That's and cool. I love laughing yeah. my ass off at Fiasco. When other people entertain me. It's great. Yeah, I, hey, I'm telling you. All right, so this gaming is a training tool. Uh, I I did a game just recently for the army. Uh, I work for the army, and we oh, do really? prototypes and stuff. Yeah, and we had um, we had a uh, one of the one of the groups here. I can't really talk about a whole lot about yeah, it, but one of the groups came and they had us put together and had us make a game. And the guy that they came to, one of the, the I'm a contractor, so he came to one yeah. of the government guys. You know that they bring in the jobs, and he's like, I've got probably the most qualified person on this base to make a game for you. So he he comes to me, and he's like, I don't know if that's what he said, but I'm sure that's what he thought. Because uh, <laughs> so he, he came he came right to me. He's like, All right, you're making a game for us. Uh, so we we put together we, and it's a box set. It's a board game. You open the box. Oh, really? They're game pieces, and we make custom that's dice. Awesome custom boards and it's a training tool it's to train soldiers how to set up an event and yep. it's basically they, yep. they go out in the field and they do this but this allows them to do it on a tabletop it's awesome it's right so, so when they awesome. make mistakes big stuff doesn't you know happen so right well not game. only that it's 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 a there are there are no like winners or losers. You don't. There's no start line or finish line or whatever. It's it's a LARP. It's basically a LARP. It's like this happened. This this thing happened, and now yep. you have to set up an event to treat these yep. people, right? Yep. And yep. how do you do it? And they have all the stuff to set up. Uh, you know, a field. It's it's like a field setup. So they have they get the boards are of a field, and then they got to lay out all the stuff and where it goes for this event, and. It is awesome, you know. They and and he, yeah. the, the instructor will come around and he'll say, well, "Why'd you put that there?" and or "This would be better over here." And then you know, and then but the game does have progression. There are things that happen in it, right. but it's really cool and it's a great, great training tool. The boxes should be in. If they're not in already, I'm probably going to get to see them finally for the first time in my hands, maybe tomorrow, but definitely this that's week. That's awesome. That's cool. That's, but yeah, that's something to be I think proud it's of too. Yeah. Like I always had this idea that you could take like a management team in a regular 
re any regular company, and you have the CFO uh, play the part of the merchandising manager, and you have the merchandising manager play the part of the CEO, and then you, you give them problems that occur in that business, and what happens is they end up with a better appreciation of other people's jobs. Right. Yeah. Kind of like one of those team building things, but yeah, role playing yeah, is, is yeah. an aspect. That kind of. But like, I think yeah. you could definitely do a role playing. So. Absolutely. Yeah. And we would love to do that for some business out there. If you're out there listening, we would love to do that for you. I'll write the game. So. There you go. Hey, hey, that's a good segue. All right, there were some other things in your doc that we want to talk about before we move on to the next okay. part of the show. And you had a note in there. It says Scott writes all his own games. Let's I do. I write all my own games. I have a problem reading stuff off a of, off of, uh, in a module and just playing it out. I, I don't feel invested in it. Um, so I write my games and um, I occasionally write games with other people and that's what I run primarily. Um, and um, I, I, I have theories on right. Like we could talk hours about theories on game writing, but um, I always find locations and I, use a location to write like my horror games because I think it grounds people in a real place. And I think that in itself is scary. Um, everybody has different thoughts on how they write. So uh, right. that's kind yeah. of mine. I find a location. So Cool. Cool. Hey, Mike, we have, all right. So Mike, we have two more questions, right? Yes. And what, what do, do we want to, do we want to use both of them? Well, I want to, uh, again, because I was fascinated by this yeah. talking to Scott before, and I just think it's cool to share that um, Scott has his own forge uh, at his house. I do. And, and I just, like, I, I want to do that so bad. Like, I want to get back. Pete and I were, when, I think I told you this, Scott, when we were in high school, uh, we had some advanced metal shopping, and one yes, of them was a forging did. shop. And... Um, that was really fun, and uh, everyone. It is you know, fun. I everyone didn't get that one. Remember making I make no uh, claims to being stuff, good at it, though. But... <laughs> so. You know, Mike, I, I didn't get that one because it was there was three of them. You could do arc welding, casting, or well, or uh, forging, and you didn't get to all pick. those are cool things. Yeah, we well, didn't get to pick. They just stuck you in two of them. So oh, I got, I got forging. I, I did. I got casting and arc oh, welding. I would have loved to have forging more than arc welding. Arc welding yeah. sucked. I so, so here's the thing for me in forging. I, I am a carpenter by trade, so I spend my days and most of my week working with my hands, building stuff um, out of wood and steel. And then I like the forge because at work, it, it, everything's under a time constraint. And with the forge, you're under the constraint of the forge. So you, you stick a piece of metal in the forge. It takes 30 seconds to get hot. You hang around and watch it. Then you, you beat on it a little bit. You work it for a while. Maybe get another 30 seconds a minute out of it. Then you right. have to put it back in the forge. It's right. a very slow process. I find it very relaxing. And besides, yeah. my beer fridge is right behind it. So. Nice. <laughs> so, wait a minute. So you get drunk and beat it. <laughs> wow. I guess I walked into that one, huh? Yeah, I bet you beat the crooked. <laughs> the night goes on. Beats it crooked. <laughs> Because it's drunk, you know. It's, right. Never mind. And sometimes he beats on it, and it's all red hot. And it's just like, stop beating on it, Jesus! Give it a break. <laughs> wow. <laughs> there goes our readership. Right the <laughs> <laughs> hey, you knew this show. It's a fiasco game. <laughs> right. <laughs> but now, hey, if you guys ever make it out here, you're welcome on a Saturday. Uh, I'll fire it up. And come out here and. Beat you can some beat metal. It. We can beat it. You can beat it. You can beat, hey, it, can beat it. You can beat it. I would love to beat it with your husband. <laughs> wow. Yeah, just three guys standing around that. beating it. <laughs> wow. Hey, Mike, you bring in the crackers. No, I'm just. <laughs> All right, anyway. So, <laughs> so, Mike, do we do we want to do the other one? Is that there isn't enough scotch in the world? No, I know, I know. <laughs> so... Mike, uh, uh, what? Uh, that one? Yeah, that one. Uh, sure. All right. All but, right. But, but only if you can pick a song in Challenger. No. Uh, no. <laughs> let's see. Um, yeah, because I see it. I, I've I, Scott told us that that uh that or Patriot does, that you have a magic you know, have magic ability. Voice. And and any like eighty songs, she's all over it. Right. Right. Okay. All right. Hall of Notes. She's a rich girl. Yeah. Very good, Mike. Good one. Thank you. Yep. Come on. And go. 
she's a rich girl and she's gone too far but you know it don't matter anyway you can rely on the old man's money you can rely on the old man's money it's a bitch girl all right that's enough. How do you <laughs> like... wait a minute Damn, it, it took too long. I was gonna I was gonna say Monty, it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Right, I'm free bird! Free bird! Literally, though, literally, we'll be driving in the car and she'll hear a song for the first time, and by the end of the song, she could she could sing pretty much the whole song. Oh, so I, I, that. You have that like is an eidetic song memory. Just, yeah. just music. But she never remembers the title of it. No, I don't know who did it, and I don't know the title. So. <laughs> All right. So you're not good at name that tune. You're just good at sing that tune. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Exactly right. Cool, cool. All right, everybody. Look, hey, go check out darkphoenixevents.com if you want to have uh, if you want to have an event, have someone come in and do your role plan for you. New England area only currently. Are you guys uh, thinking about spreading out further uh, south at any point, or is that is that good? Work is that... on New England for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say that's that's a pretty big area. Yeah, yeah that's a pre- it is a big area. Then you well, gotta got to find regionals and get your regional managers and uh... right, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but hey, franchise. Uh, you could franchise. Yeah, well, yeah, when we can take the jet, we'll, uh, yeah, that's we'll right. think oh, that's about right. going other places. Once so. we get my right. private jet, we're good yeah. to go. Yeah, All right, that's right. when you're going to fly us up, and we'll we'll beat it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's okay. correct. Yeah. Yes. So, but but so if you're in the if you're in the New England area, think about it. I mean, you could have a party. You could have a bunch. I mean, imagine you got teenage kids. You could you could throw like oh, a big yeah. party. They yep. come over so, and, and. Yep. Jonathan was asking what parts of New England. So. What is your catchment area? I mean, are you Every, literally like Maine to yeah. New York? Yeah, yep. yeah. We've got Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, uh, Connecticut, Rhode Island, um, Massachusetts, parts of New York. And, and down to New York City. Yep. So. All right. New York City. No. <laughs> New York City. Matter of fact, we've done a couple games in New York City yep. already. Yep. So, yeah. Nice. Oh, cool. So you speaking to- of games. Speaking of games. Oh, dun, yeah. Dun, dun. All right, everybody. Yes. Uh, real, real quick, one more time. Go to uh, darkphoenixevents.com and check out, check out their cool page. And like our page. Yeah, absolutely. Like their page. Yes. It's important. Hey, everybody, it's important for us creators, if you like our pages and stuff and follow yeah. what we do. And look, it's hey, huge. go up to the thing. Go where it says get notifications and say and click on the drop that down and say see notifications first so that you yeah. actually see the notifications of pages you want to follow. That way you'll get all of them. You don't let yep. Facebook tell you what you can see. You'll That's know, right. And you'll know, where, control. You'll know right. where we're gonna be. So Right. Absolutely. Now, uh real quick, when is your two cons you do? Like what time of uh, year? One's next it? weekend. <laughs> So, well, um, and it actually goes Thursday to Sunday. That's called South Seas. So, uh, okay, did that because Rhode Island's kind of the southern part of New England, right? Uh, to us, so. and we're right by the sea, and we're by the water. So that's how it started. Uh, and then the one in August is the camping one. And that's Camping Cthulhu Con. Camping Cthulhu Con. Yeah. Cool, cool. And where do you where do you guys camp at? Um, we camp at a place called Sun River in New Hampshire. It's this is great little kind of unknown campground, the huge sites. It's uh, known now. Not a, not, <laughs> not a lot of I mean, not a lot of amenities. There's no golf courses there, or you know. Uh, got hot water. You can kind of have a shower. Got hot water. There's electricity. It's got bathrooms and a, yeah. a swimming hole. That's about it. But it's, it's a nice. great Center campground. Bronson. Yep. Right on the Sun Cook River. Yep. Got good creepy looking trees like. Oh, oh yeah. Do. Wicked, oh. yeah. uh, wicked, yep. wicked looking wicked. trees. Wicked, wicked, wicked cool. right, Fantastic. All right, thank you all, but stick around because we're going to play a game right now. We are going to go here. And uh, it's game time with the Mythwits. I'm your game master, Peter Bryant. And on this episode, we're playing Bet the Geek. Mike, we're going to see how strong your geek foo is. I have a I have a list of trivia questions from the popular TV series The Simpsons. Each round Ooh, I will I will Simpsons. ask Mike a trivia question. Now listen, before he answers, I will go around the room and ask each of the panelists whether Mike will get the answer correct or get it wrong. So you don't have to know the answer. You just gotta you just gotta bet whether Mike's gonna get it right or whether he's gonna get it wrong. 
end, you have to hedge your bet by one, two, or three points based on how confident you are in Mike's Simpson Foo. Once the betting is all in, Mike will reveal his answer. And you guys don't have to worry about writing anything down or whatever. Mike is going to he's gonna he's gonna keep scoring on, on, on us. Um, he can't cheat because he can't win. Uh, there will be there will be a total a total of six questions, and each panelist will start with ten points. The only uh, person I can beat is myself. <laughs> As it should be. No, I was gonna say now we're talking about the forge again, aren't we? Right, back to the forge. Back to the uh, forge we'll again. start. Now, we're going to start with three warm-up questions to help us gauge Mike's abilities. Good luck, right. everybody. It's now time to bet the geek. So let me turn that over. And yeah, let me. And then, and, then, and then we'll do scores, right? This. There we go. Fantastic. All right, good. It all worked. Yay. I like when stuff works. All right, so here we go. Uh, now you guys don't have to bet on this one. Uh, this is I'm just going to ask Mike questions yeah. and he's going to answer them for these first three, just this so we can get an idea proper. of where he is. Yes. All right, Mike. Your first question: What was Ned Flanders' wife's name? Maud. Maud Flanders. That is correct, Mike. Oh my Look, Woo! we're going to get to the thing like we usually, when I'm asking you questions, it'll be Maude Flanders. Yeah, yeah, she died. She was shot with a t-shirt <laughs> cannon, as a matter of fact. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right. So Mike knows a few things. He knows a thing or two about a thing or two. All right, Mike, second question. All right. Where does Millhouse's dad work? Oh, well, no, that would depend on which seasons we're talking about. But uh, I'll just say the Cracker Factory. That him and his wife used to own. That is correct. Wow. His food right. is strong. His food is his strong. His food is strong. It's giving you an yep. idea where he is. <laughs> but but right, I Mike. guarantee you, Pete has dug deep. I oh, guarantee you. I got some deep ones. All right, Mike. How much money does Bart sell his soul to Millhouse for? <laughs> Come on. Come on. Really? That's five bucks, dude. Yeah. Okay. I that was. Come I knew that would be an easy one. I knew that'd be easy. One. All right. So you guys all see where Mike hey, is. Hey. What? Do you know who ate the soul? <clears throat> uh, Nelson? No, Willie. Mo? He ate his soul. I ate his little soul. I oh, a Willie? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Well, Mike knows his stuff. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Uh, so, Mike. Mike. What street? Now, don't answer this. I know. What street do the Simpsons live on? Matter of fact, I'm going to take it one step higher because you are so smarty pants on this. What is the address? Okay. What's the address of where the Simpsons live? All right, you all saw that reaction. Yeah. Mike will be Mike will be keeping score. We'll start with I'll I'll go first because uh, it, it's just a because it's easier that way so you guys can see how it's done. Uh, I'm going to say that Mike. I'm going to say that Mike gets it wrong for one point. And then we'll go to uh, we'll go to Scott. Oh, me. Uh, I'm going to say Mike gets it right for two. All right. I'm going to say Mike gets it wrong for two. Hey, Mike, you keeping score? Oh, shit. Sorry. <laughs> I was too busy trying to put on such a poker face. All right. I uh, said, I said, I, I, I said one... No, uh, you got it backwards. No, sorry. Pete <laughs> said no for one. one. Right? Not yep. said yes for two. Yep. And Petra said uh, no for two. Right. All right. All right. So uh, I think all of us know that it's Evergreen Terrace. Right. Uh, now, I'm going to have to pull a number out of my ass, and I think it's wrong. <laughs> I'm going to go on record and say I do believe that this is wrong. I'm going to say 123 Evergreen Terrace, but it's not. And the number is significant, something having to do with uh, Matt Groening. But I, unfortunately, I, I feel like it's wrong. But it's the, I'm, my final answer is 123 Evergreen Terrace. Mike? Seven, 742 evergreen terrace so yeah. in the 
it's it's something. It, it's it's some. There's a significance to that number, seven forty two. So yep. Right. Um. All right. So yep, you didn't know. So I get a I get a Y. Scott gets an N. I go. get a okay. Y. And a Y. Patriot gets a Y. So there you go. All right. The score is Pete with 11, Scott with 8, and Patriot with 12. Woo! All right. Patriot's leading the board. All right. All right, Mike. Question two. Who tells Ralph Wiggum to burn things? And uh, we're going to go Scott first this time. Oh, boy. I'm going to say he's going to know it for one. Just saying yes for one. All right. Yeah. All right. And then, all right, so Petra, what do you think? I'm going to say yes for three. Yes for three. Let me down, Mike. All right. And then, uh, Mike, I think you've got to know this one. So I'm going to say yes for three. You've got to know this one. I didn't, but you got to know it. All right. So you're saying yes. I say yes for three. three. Yeah. All right. Could you repeat the question again? Yes, sir. Oh, boy. That's not a good That's sign. Not a good That's sign. not a good sign. <laughs> Shut not up. for not me. Who tells Ralph Wiggum to burn things? Yeah. Uh, Come on, Mike. No pressure, Mike. A little pressure. Come on, Mike. A little pressure. Uh, you, it, you don't have to give the name. You can even give what it is. Because uh, I don't know the name. It's a what. <laughs> yeah. Mike. Oh, God. <laughs> you're an ass. This All is right, first, so, uh, this is, you, you're going to know it once you hear it, right? It's what yeah, I, I know I am. And, and, and because it's like I'm thinking – like all I'm thinking is, is like it's the devil or some kind of a doll, like a devil or something. And But I, no, I don't think it's a doll. But uh, I'm just going to have to go with that, like a, a doll or something that's talking to him as he's holding it. That's all I see. Okay, so it is something that's talking to him, <laughs> but you're saying like a doll, right? Yes. Okay, Mike. No. I'm sorry. It's a leprechaun. Uh, leprechaun. God Do you remember damn. that now? Right. Yeah, kind of. Uh, well. I, so it was a face. Know. I I looked it up, and it was a Facebook meme. So I figured. <sighs> Figured you had to have heard of that one. All right, anyway. All right. So Pete got it co no. not correct. Not correct. Uh, Scott got it not correct. And, oh, everyone got it Pete, not correct. Not correct. We we had faith in you, buddy. We had faith in you. We're betting on you, Mike. <laughs> we had faith in you. All right. Here we go. You got to know all, this one. It's all about Pete building me up and <laughs> ripping me down. <laughs> all right. Mike. Who is the news reporter for Channel 6? And I'm going to go first. I'm going to say yes for three. Got to know this one. Got to know this one. Uh, Scott, or let's go Patriot first. Patriot? Yes for three. And Scott? Yes, we'll all jump on the bandwagon. Yes for two, though. Yes for two. Oh, I see what you're doing there. Okay, yep, yep. Let's see. Pete's three. Scott's it's two. Two. And Patriot is three. Three. All right. Uh, yeah, I got to work this out so I can do the score thing. It's it's a formatting thing. I can't really do it because it screws up the graphics or whatever. But anyway, so Mike, this is uh, the hardest for me for me to wrap my head around for I whatever know. reason, especially know, if I'm trying to uh, remember. <clears throat> so know, okay, uh, so, so we'll do it again. Uh, Channel so six. Who uh, is the news, news reporter? Anchor. Yep, that would be Kent Brockman. That is correct. Woo! Right. So we all got that one right. What's the score? It is now Pete with 11, Scott with 9, and Petra with... Petra. Uh, Petra sorry, damn it, with 12. <laughs> 12, all right. Give it, Corey. All right, Mike, only three more. <laughs> Mike, three more. Just sorry. three more, buddy. Three more. All right. Mike. All right. Let's do this. Does Marge use blue dye in her hair? All right. Uh, Scott, why don't you go first on this one? I'm going to say yes for three this time. Okay. Uh, Mike, I'm going to say, I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to say you're going to get this wrong. I'm going to say no for three. Ooh. 
I'm going to say... Theory, I'm game theorying it. I got, yes, I'm got. i either going to yes fall or pull ahead. Oh, sorry. Yes for three. Yes for yes. three. All right. Yes for, for three. three. That's it. All, All right, right. Everyone's locked in. Yeah. Uh, she does use die. That is a yes. Damn it. And I don't know the number. If it's, there's, there's like a special number of it. Yeah. Do you have the answer for that? I got it here. I got it here. What is it? Yeah. God damn you. All right. Yes. Marge uses blue die number 56 stating number 56. she's been gray as a mule since she was 17. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we bit redemption there. Thank that, you. That's that was pretty good, Mike. That's good redemption. Good <laughs> thank redemption. You, thank you. Wait a minute, you screwed me up. Yeah, I did. I did. Sorry, yeah, I just yeah. realized that. Yeah, I was gonna so say I, my no score can't you. be that high. There no. you go. All right, so uh, Petra is ahead uh, by Woo! three, right? Twelve, three. Yeah. So she's at fifteen. At fifteen. So uh, what are we at? The we're still have two questions left. Two questions. Anybody's game. Let's do it. All right. Sweat, Mike. Sweat. <laughs> <laughs> take a drink, dude. Take a drink. Mike. I'll take one. How it. old is Ned Flanders? Flanders? How old is Ned Flanders? And oh. I'll go first. I'm going to I'm going to say there's no way he's going to get this absolutely right. I'm going to say no for 3. Um Patreon, you want to go next? Yeah. Hmm. I'm going to say yes for 2. Ooh, you got some points. You can you can you can bet on that, yeah. It's my chance to pull ahead, Mike. Here you go, yes Scott. for three. Yes for three. All right. And uh Petra said yes, yes for or two. no for. Yes, yes for two. two. Yes for two, yep. All right. Well, it certainly is somebody's chance to pull ahead or behind. Definitely. <laughs> uh wait a minute, that was Patra for two. No, yep. no, she said no for two or yes for two? I said yes for two. Yes for two. Okay. All right. So uh, that is a oddly, extremely specific. However, I want uh, at least a brownie point if I get within the, the uh, you know, the uh -oh. nearest, uh, what is that, gen you know, 10-year mark. So and I'm going to say he's in his Ten 70s. Years. Uh, and I don't know this outright, so I'm going to have to take a guess, and I'm going to say he uh -oh. is. 74. Ned Flanders? Ned Flanders. Yeah. 74. All yeah. right. That's a big old diddly. <laughs> but I'm right. He's note. in the 70s, isn't he? Nope. Ned's in like his 50s. What? Ned's in his 50s. What? He's Ned. old as shit. Ned is old. He is 60 years old. Oh, wow. All right. Darn it. <laughs> yes. All right. Pull oh, ahead. Crush me. All right. Damn it, Crush me. Damn it. I mean, look. He's reaching way back, isn't he? I Come know. on. That's some deep Dude. cuts he's giving me. I I can't. Fool, and if I give you all easy ones, what do you do? You go, oh, you spoon feed him to me. It's all fair. You, you could have like put a you could have put a really hard one in there too, so people would know like, oh, you know, he's not a golden child. I, dude, I thought the cracker. I, dude, hey, I thought the cracker factory was a hard question. What do I know? <laughs> I thought that was a hard one. Well, I know that one from playing uh, Simpsons Tapped Out. You know, I got see, the cracker factory. See, he plays the video game. See, he, and he has cards. He gets the cards. He got the comic ah. books. He watched the show. He's seen the movie. The only thing he hasn't done is going to Simpsons. Simpsons Land. What? Yeah, no, I know, right? I'm That's sorry. What I'm I, I, I failed you. All right, so Pete got that one correct. Yes. And Scott and Petra got that one wrong. Wow. So um, Pete is that. still in the running. Uh, Scott, good luck to you, buddy. Um, <laughs> Down below five. <laughs> I mean, you're definitely gonna have to game theory this one. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> All right. All right, Pete. Come on, let's have Here it. Here we man. go. Number five. This is make it or break it. It's anybody's game still. Number five. Yeah, it is. Anyone could and win I'm, this. I'm still. keeping my poker face for this one, guys. I'm not All even right. gonna. So I will say that this one, this one's a little abstract. Uh, maybe Mike knows it. Maybe he doesn't. Uh, I just want to give you guys a fair warning. This was this this is not something they talked about a lot, but it could have been something important. Anyway, Mike, what's the name of Krusty the Clown's plane? 
It was on an episode. I'll even give you a hint. It was on an episode where there was an auction and they were auctioning off his stuff. All right. I'm going to go first. Unless somebody else wants to. Anybody else want to go first? You want to see what I'm going to do? I'll go first. All right, Scott, you can go I'm first. I'm going to say no for 179. 179. <laughs> Scott is saying no for all of the points. <laughs> I, and I'm going to go opposite him. I'm saying yes for all the points. All right. So Scott's going no for three. No, you can only do three, Mike. You only, you can only do I was going to give him a shot. No, you, can only do, <laughs> you can only do three. Oh, Darren, I just did it again. No for three. And you're saying what, Pete? Yes. Oh, uh, Patriot's for, Patriot was first. Oh, okay. You you're say? saying Patriot? Yes for three. Yes for three. All right, and uh, I'm going to say no for three. I don't think you're going to know this one. Absolutely. I think this was too hard. I'm going to lose by crown. Watch this. No. Oddly enough, I'm going to the dentist tomorrow to get a crown. <laughs> of our nation. Is it, is it a crusty crown? <laughs> oh. I hope Crust, not. <laughs> crusty, you can name it. Crusty the crown. Come on. I got. Go. Hey, I have a cactus at work, and I named it Prickle Rick. Ah, because nice. it looks like a pickle. It looks like a pickle with. The, anyway, all right, Mike. <laughs> so, Mike, oh, what, right. what is the name of Crusted Clown's plane? Mike. I'm all right. I'm going to take an educated guess because uh, Patreon. I'm, I'm just going to be really sorry and say uh -oh. that I, I don't know this off the top of my head. <laughs> Damn it! I know, I know. But for you, <laughs> I'm not going to make up. Uh, an insanely funny name like I wanted to. I am going to actually see if I can workshop this, okay? You rock. You rock. <laughs> I'm never going to get it. I'm never going to get it. Crusty Mobile with wings. I'm going to say the Dead Zeppelin. That, that would be a good name. That yeah, would be a good yeah, name. name. But, uh... Sorry, Mike. Oh, sorry. No, you I, you couldn't Mike ask me what his real effort. name was, could you? I knew that. Oh. Herschel Krustovsky. No, uh, no, you couldn't ask me that one. What was the name of it? The name of the plane was I'm on a roller gay. Wow. All right, Mike, I cannot hold that against you, dude. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Although I don't think I'll ever forget it now. <laughs> I mean, I got I got Scott and Petra's name, you know, face burned into I'm going to know you gay. So uh, yeah, that's a thing. All right, so Pete was correct. Yes. And Scott was correct. So 179. So. And uh, <laughs> I was wrong. I was wrong. <gasps> so hey. Uh, hey. Uh, Go ahead, Pete. You read the scores. Yep, yep. The final scores are, uh, we'll start at the bottom. Petra, oh, you fell from grace. Petra had 10. Oh. Scott yeah, had happened. Scott had 12. And I, this for, for, I don't win these too often, but for once, 14. I don't win them too often. Knowledge. <laughs> you had insider knowledge. I, hey, I, I knew uh, Mike I knew, so. I told you I mean, all what I knew. I think oh, it was fair yeah. enough. He thought I would <laughs> Yeah, he thought I would bend on Cracker Factory, but no. <laughs> <laughs> all I hey, all I knew was that Mike knows Simpsons really, really well. He and I don't sit around and talk about it because I don't really know it very well. Uh, which which is kind of tough to put clues together because I'm like that's a hard one, sure. <laughs> well, that'll be easy. <laughs> Maybe not. So, yeah. all right. Well, Jonathan's like, oh, I smell a new cube of death card. <laughs> oh, yeah, could be. Could be. Yeah. Yeah. All right, everybody. Uh, I think we're going we're gonna to wrap it up. Make sure you go to darkphoenixevents.com to book all the cool events that uh, Dark Phoenix will bring you. Uh, make sure you, you come out to TotalCon next year to see James um, shake his <laughs> fist and twirl his mustache. Mm, Dark Phoenix <laughs> next year. <laughs> yeah. As they shoot him with a t-shirt cannon. Maybe he'll go out like Ned Flanders' wife. <laughs> we got to somehow secretly get like people to... To just go up to him and go, hey, 
Did you see Dark Phoenix has this? Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, that would be the best. It will be done. No. We, we, we will stop planning next week. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, we, we are going to stir the shit real good this year. <laughs> Absolutely. That's, that's no, what we... All good that's... fun. All good fun. Hey, Mike, that is our bailiwick, my man. That is our that's bailiwick. That's what we do. Right, 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 right. Well, thank All right, everybody. For us. That was awesome. Uh, Awesome. Excellent. Well, we thank you it. for coming on. It was and, uh, very good. Remember, very good. everybody, we have the best smelling GMs out there. Yes. <laughs> yes. Mm. Oh, you have so, a bathing clause, don't you? We, we do. do. We yes. do. <laughs> well, bury the lead, why don't you? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so I can just sit there and go, mm, my GM smells so effervescent. <laughs> it smells so good. Yep. Can you put a little fan behind your head? So that <laughs> I thought a con GM here. It's like an incense at our table. No, that's fantastic. All right. All right, all right, all right. Everybody, 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 let's do this thing here. You. Oh, there we go. All right. You have just enjoyed another awesome episode of The Myth Wits. We're live on Facebook Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Please ask us or our guest questions or just banter with the other myth fits and man we had a live room tonight it was hopping uh they weren't even they were barely even talking to us they were talking to each other um you can if you miss our live show you can always catch the encore episodes on facebook or on youtube find us on facebook and twitter as Mythwits and check out mythwits.com if you don't have time for videos make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher or you can just listen at mythwits.podbean.com do the like follow subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate and make sure to share your favorite episode on social media i know there's at least one person in that room that this is going to be their favorite episode uh help Bye. spread mythwits love over the entire Planet. Matter of fact, I bet it's Laura. Is it Laura? Lara? Laura? L A R A? Ah, this is going to be her favorite episode, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> Wits, it's going to be her only episode. Mythwits is part of the TSR <laughs> Podcast Network. Check out TSRPN.com for more cool stuff. There you go, James. TSR. Um, Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it. Don't sell it. And don't put it in your dungeon to torture your players. Make sure to check out Studio187.com, soon to be Aetherforge.com, for more cool stuff and to join our mailing list. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Tell your friends to tune in. And until next week, Mike? I bet my Wookiee. Uh. Oh, <laughs> and that's it. Bye, all.